Step into the gritty world of the 1978 film I Spit on Your Grave, a controversial thriller that has sparked both fascination and debate since its release. This cult classic, directed by Mayor Zarchai, immerses viewers in a raw and unapologetic narrative, exploring themes that push the boundaries of conventional cinema. Amidst the intense storyline, you might find yourself pondering the question, what classic Hollywood actor in this movie was your favorite? As you revisit this cinematic piece, consider the performances that left a lasting impression on you. Reflecting on personal experiences, one might ask, when was the first time you watched this movie? The answer could unveil a range of emotions and perspectives as audiences engage with a film that has left an indelible mark on the horror genre. Before delving into your cherished memories, let's set the stage with some intriguing facts about the movie. I Spit on Your Grave navigates the aftermath of a brutal assault, turning the tables on the perpetrators in a relentless pursuit of justice. The film's unflinching portrayal of revenge and its impact on the human psyche challenges viewers to confront uncomfortable truths about society and morality. Now, we invite you to share your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie. Whether it's a first-time viewing that left you breathless or a discussion that ignited thought-provoking conversations, we would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Explore the depths of I Spit on Your Grave and join the conversation. Your unique perspective adds to the rich tapestry of discussions surrounding this iconic film. Share your thoughts and experiences with fellow enthusiasts who appreciate the nuances of this cinematic journey. So, what's your story? Camille Keaton, known for her role in the 1978 movie I Spit on Your Grave, is the great niece of legendary silent film actor Buster Keaton. This connection to Hollywood royalty adds an intriguing layer to the film's background. Buster Keaton's legacy in the film industry is significant, and having his great niece in a controversial and impactful movie like I Spit on Your Grave is a noteworthy aspect. The movie, directed by Mayor Zarchai, revolves around the character of Jennifer Hills, played by Camille Keaton, seeking revenge after a brutal assault. The film's raw and unflinching portrayal of revenge and the consequences it brings spark both controversy and discussion. One interesting detail is that the character of Matthew, portrayed in the film, was inspired by a mentally disabled man who worked in Mayor Zarchai's building. This choice by the director adds a unique dimension to the character, providing insight into the film's creative process. Additionally, it's worth noting that the filming locations of I Spit on Your Grave were later used for Friday the 13th Part 2 in late 1980. The shared locations between these two notable horror films create a connection between them, offering fans an interesting tidbit about the film industry's reuse of settings. In summary, Camille Keaton's familial connection to Buster Keaton the inspiration behind the character of Matthew, and the shared filming locations with Friday the 13th Part 2 contribute to the intriguing background of the 1978 movie I Spit on Your Grave. These details add depth to the film's narrative and its lasting impact on the horror genre. Mayor Zarchai, the director of I Spit on Your Grave, drew inspiration from a real-life incident that fueled his commitment to making the film. One day, while driving with a friend and his daughter, they encountered a bloodied and naked young woman crawling out of a park. This shocking sight led them to grapple with the decision of whether to take her to the hospital or the police. Zarchai later revealed that the officer they encountered was unsympathetic, insisting on questioning the victim before seeking medical attention for her broken jaw. The incident left a lasting impact on Zarchai, prompting him to make a film that would address the harsh realities of sexual assault. This gritty motivation behind the movie is reflective of Zarchai's dedication to shedding light on the harsh aftermath of such violent acts. It underscores the film's intention to confront uncomfortable truths and spark important conversations about the treatment of assault victims. In essence, I Spit on Your Grave emerges not just as a cinematic endeavor, but as a social commentary on the challenges faced by survivors of sexual violence. The film's core narrative, centered around Jennifer Hills seeking revenge after a brutal assault, takes on a deeper significance when viewed through the lens of Zarchai's real-life encounter. It adds a layer of authenticity to the film's portrayal of revenge and the consequences that follow, making it more than just a controversial piece of cinema. 
This raw and unflinching approach to storytelling, grounded in real-world experiences, sets I spit on your grave apart and contributes to its lasting impact on the horror genre. It becomes a powerful vehicle for addressing societal issues surrounding sexual assault, challenging viewers to confront uncomfortable truths. The film's evolution from a real-life incident to a controversial cinematic narrative exemplifies the complex interplay between reality and fiction in the world of filmmaking. In conclusion, the genesis of I Spit on Your Grave from a harrowing real-life encounter underscores its commitment to addressing the stark realities of sexual assault. Mayor Zarchai's personal experience shaped the film into a gritty and impactful exploration of revenge and its consequences, elevating it beyond the realm of traditional horror cinema. In doing so, the movie not only captivates audiences, but also serves as a catalyst for discussions surrounding the treatment of assault victims and the responsibilities of society at large. Empowering controversy, unveiling the layers of I Spit on Your Grave Camille Keaton's uncompromising portrayal of Jennifer Hills in the 1978 film. Known under various titles such as Day of the Woman, I Hate Your Guts, and The Rape and Revenge of Jennifer Hill leaves an indelible mark on cinematic history. Keaton, the great niece of silent film legend Buster Keaton, delivers a performance that goes beyond the surface of traditional horror. Contrary to the norm, the film lacks a conventional soundtrack. Mayor Zarchai, the director, initially sought music but found nothing fitting, leaving the movie devoid of melodic accompaniment. Instead, the only auditory elements are the haunting echoes of a church organ, snippets from a Giacomo Puccini record, ambient store background music, and sporadic riffs from John's harmonica. Camille Keaton, in a 2019 interview, challenges the common narrative surrounding the film. She vehemently rejects claims of misogyny, emphasizing the film's empowering nature. According to Keaton, the movie draws inspiration from real-life events where Zarchai rescued a woman who had been molested. Keaton sees the film as a brave statement, shedding light on a pervasive issue affecting one in five women in the United States. She argues that the gritty cinematography reflects the harsh reality, making the film an unfiltered portrayal rather than an exploitative venture. Intriguingly, the controversy around the film extends beyond its content. The title I Spit on Your Grave, initially disliked by Zarchai, played a pivotal role in its success. Despite the film industry's discomfort with the subject matter, the subtitle Ack a Day of the Woman is now a mandated inclusion on all promotional material. This evolution in titles mirrors the film's journey from a controversial release to a cult classic. In conclusion, I Spit on Your Grave, born from real-life encounters and devoid of a conventional soundtrack stands as a unique cinematic venture. Camille Keaton's perspective challenges perceptions, framing the film not as a perpetuation of misogyny, but as a bold statement on a pressing societal issue. As we bid adieu to the cinematic journey through the harrowing landscapes of I Spit on Your Grave, let the echoes of its narrative linger in the corridors of your mind. This visceral odyssey dared to traverse the darker realms of human nature, leaving an indelible imprint on those who dared to witness its unapologetic narrative. Now, dear reader, take a moment to delve into the recesses of your cinematic soul. What chords did this controversial masterpiece strike within you? Was it the haunting cinematography that etched itself into your visual lexicon? or the unflinching portrayal of resilience in the face of unspeakable horrors. Share your reflections, your musings, your raw and unfiltered thoughts. I Spit on Your Grave is more than a film. It's a conversation starter, a mirror reflecting our own capacities for empathy, revulsion, and catharsis. Perhaps you found solace in discussing its complexities with fellow cinephiles or discovered a newfound appreciation for the power of storytelling that challenges societal norms. Your memories and insights are the threads that weave the tapestry of collective cinematic experience. Let this be a communal space, a haven for diverse perspectives to coalesce and collide. What does this film mean to you? How has it shaped your perception of storytelling and resilience? As we close this chapter on the exploration of I Spit on Your Grave, we extend our heartfelt gratitude for your time, your curiosity, and your willingness to engage in this discourse. The cinema, after all, is a living, breathing entity, a canvas upon which we project our fears, hopes, and humanity. Share your thoughts, spark conversations, and let the resonance of this cinematic journey reverberate through the annals of our shared narrative. Until next, we explore the realms of celluloid together. 
Thank you for being a part of this tapestry, woven by the threads of your unique perspective. 